First, a super quick mini lecture about why you would want to find theta 3 and theta 4, and then we'll actually do it. This might seem a little bit complicated the first time you do it, but you're going to have to do this calculation a million times in your machinery class, so once you get past about the third time, it's going to be super easy and routine and totally normal for you. And to make it easier to follow along, your TAs, Indiana and Serenity are going to be here to help you out every step of the way. A student's first instinct is always to solve for the interior angles of a four-bar linkage because those are the ones that are clearly visible, and sometimes those are important. Uh, point C up here, the interior angle there is called the transmission angle. But for most purposes, when you are doing posture analysis or position analysis, which is then used to f solve for velocity and acceleration, you always need angles measured to the positive x axis. You want to use these for absolute coordinates, which are going to be way easier to deal with than relative coordinates, which is what you get stuck with when you solve for interior angles. Posture analysis, position analysis is just using regular sine and cosine. So if I wanted to call the origin here at, at ground at point A, then I could say that point B's X coordinate is at 50 cosine 100 and his Y coordinate 50 sine 100, right? We can just use sine and cosine along with the length to find the location of point B. And we could even go a step further and then find point C. That point, its X coordinate is going to be 50 cosine 100 plus 150 cosine theta 3. Its y coordinate would be 50 sine 100 plus 150 sine theta 3. And that's the point of finding theta 3 and theta 4 is you can use these angles measure the positive x axis with sine and cosine to find the position of the points at the end of each link. You can go a step further from that and find velocities of each point. So when you take the time derivative of this x direction equation for the position of point C, you get the velocity in the x direction for point C. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so you would end up with negative 50 sine 100. And then because of the chain rule and that 100 degree angle is changing, you'd also get a times theta 2 dot, where that 100 degrees is theta 2. And then minus 150 sine theta 3 times theta 3 dot. So finding the angle theta 3 is what we'll do today. Finding the time derivative of theta 3 is something for a, a whole nother video later on. But you could keep this conversation going by going after acceleration also. Having these theta 3 and theta 4, basically having angles measured to the positive x-axis, that's what's useful for position analysis, posture analysis, velocity analysis, acceleration, Right When you're actually trying to calculate energy or forces, you know, doing a sum of forces in different directions, all of that work, you're going to always want angles measured to the positive x-axis. And so now how do we actually find these things? The first step towards posture analysis for four-bar linkage is always going to be to find this length L, which is the diagonal line from the end of the crank to the ground that is connected to the rocker. This length, this diagonal line, is going to split your four-bar linkage, this quadrilateral, into two different triangles. And I'm drawing out these triangles to sort of preview a little bit how we're going to be finding theta 4. So from my original drawing, you can see that theta 4 plus phi 1 plus phi 2 have to all add up to 180 degrees. So using my two new triangles that I've just formed, if I can solve for phi 1, and phi 2 on these two triangles, then I'll be able to subtract those from 180, and that's going to give me theta 4. So the first step to doing this is solving for L, because L is part of both of these new triangles that I'm making. So I'm going to solve for L using law of cosines. And it might have been a few years, maybe since pre-calculus, since you've thought about law of cosines very much. Just as a reminder, c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c. If you don't remember that, you need to remember it. For this class, it's going to come up so often, you just have to remember it now. Main thing to remember is the c squared that's on the side by itself, that is the length that is opposite the angle that you are doing, the cosine theta at the end. That cosine term has to go with the one on the left side by itself. So to solve for L, I'm going to use law of cosines with my lower triangle 
because that's where I have the most information. That's where I know the 100 degrees. So L is my side opposite the 100 degrees. That's why L squared is on the left and the other sides are on the right and I get a value for L 97.09. Using my tall triangle, I now know all three sides, um, but I'm missing that angle still. So I can do law of cosines again, but this time the phi one is my unknown. So phi one is opposite of the 150. So the 150 is on its own side. L and 140 are on the side with cosine phi one. Uh, plug in that L is the 97 and get phi one 76.11 degrees. Could do law of cosines again with the lower triangle where phi two is opposite of the length 50. Uh, but let's switch it up and do law of sines, which takes a, a little bit less calculator pushes to actually get to an answer. Law of sines, basically sine of A over A is equal to sine of B over B. If you look at basically an angle and its length that's opposite that angle, right? Each of the three pairs for A, B, and C all have to be equal to each other. So since I know sine of 100 and L, and then I know 50 and sine of phi two, I can solve for phi two. That's gonna give me a value phi two of 30.4 degrees. Subtracting phi one and phi two from 180 degrees gets me a theta four 73.41 degrees. And again, this angle for the rocker um, is measured to the positive x-axis, so it'll be super useful when doing the vector loop method or a vector loop closure uh, method later on when you're doing position posture analysis or velocity analysis. You always want angles measured to the positive axis and this makes it really easy to solve for the positions and velocities of points. If this video is helping you learn a little bit, then let's reward your TA Indiana. You hit the thumbs up button. I'll give him his churu and the thumbs up and churus. These are definitely his two favorite things. Spatially and visually, theta four is definitely the easier of these two to find than theta three, right? Splitting this up into two triangles and solving for angle, like that, that's kind of straightforward. Theta three is the one that students usually struggle with more. And so I'm making a drawing down here off to the side to help sort of illustrate uh, how we're gonna find each of these angles. Because unfortunately, theta three is sort of part of one of the interior angles. It's not outside the device like theta four. But there is something kind of cool that you can see that phi two, which is the interior angle on that lower triangle, based on this rule, I think it's called like opposite interior angles, this phi two down on the bottom is also equal to phi two on the top, that is, Theta three is above the x-axis, between the x-axis and the 150, and phi two is below the x-axis, between the x-axis and L. And combined, phi two plus theta three add up to this big interior angle, phi three, right, the interior angle on the bigger triangle. And this spatial reasoning step makes the trigonometry very straightforward, but it takes kind of a leap of spatial reasoning just to get here. So hopefully by seeing this once and then practicing it a couple of times, it'll seem natural and it'll come to you more naturally than in the future. So since I already know a whole bunch about the big triangle, I can solve for phi three using law of sines, where I'm saying now that phi one, which I've already solved for is the opposite of 150 and phi three, which I'm trying to find, is opposite of the 140. And so I can multiply this out and get to phi three of 64.96 degrees. And since phi two, which was 30, plus theta three, which I'm trying to find, have to add up to phi three, this 64 degrees, I can just subtract 64 minus the 30 and get theta three, the final answer I'm looking for, 34.48 degrees. And with that, your TA Serenity has now earned her churu treat and the cycle is all complete. And if you're ready to keep going, if you wanna move on, this was position analysis, posture analysis. If you're ready to move on to velocity analysis, that's the next video linked up on the screen here where you'll learn about the vector loop method where you'll actually use these angles, theta three and theta four to find position, which you'll use to find velocity.